What all this means for wider society, for governments, local authorities, planners, developers, landowners, is to renew a journey that we were on in the past, that perhaps we've lost sight of, and will take a generation or more to work through, is to say we're going to build communities and homes, not just houses, not just streets. It's very, very easy for government to set a target. It may or may not hit it, but they can make a speech and say 300,000, 200,000 houses a year. But houses don't make homes, and lots of houses don't make communities. I want the people who are involved in this to go to what's in their heart, where what they dream of, and I believe they do genuinely dream of it, is that in the future, if they go back to the stuff they've built, they'll see a thriving community with people stable and at home. For government and wider society, housing stability matters because it impacts so many other areas of our lives. A lot of my work is dealing with vulnerable children. And one of the government's stipulations for what is appropriate accommodation for a 16 year old in the care system is that their housing must have a lock on the door and there must be no mold in the building. And I'm thinking that's such a narrow view of what children in care actually need. They need stable relationships. They need people to cheer them on. They need access to education. They need access to green and blue spaces. And if they don't get access to those things, there are huge consequences for those young people. Uh, it often affects their well-being, their mental health. We need to think about how we can flourish as human beings and housing stability is one element of that. A good policy in terms of housing justice leads to equitable practice and fair access. So everyone, irrespective of their racial, cultural, religious backgrounds, their social and economic status, age or gender orientation, and those living with disabilities can have confidence that they can access housing. Long gone are the days where there was open discrimination on these grounds. However, we have to admit there still exists implicit biases and practices. No one should feel that they cannot have access to decent housing and the opportunity to create a home because of who they are. I think for society, the government and national policy, there are a number of really important things. We need to make sure that all new house building is to the very top environmental standards. So we need to have zero carbon, passive housing, uh, housing that is moving towards zero emissions. Um, and we need to have a program, a national program of retrofitting existing housing with better insulation and with ways of providing heating and lighting that are uh, without using fossil fuels. So that needs to be done at the, 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 na the national level. We also need to be careful where we are putting new housing. So it shouldn't be on land that is important for biodiversity. And it shouldn't be on floodplains either. I think for our government and wider society, there is so much out, um, out now in terms of um, new technologies when it comes to building houses. Um, so that the sustainable houses, so that they, they don't cost as much to run. And actually they don't necessarily cost as much to build. The other thing is uh, governments can be doing is, is considering when making sure that we, as we build as a housing industry, that we're legislating or putting policies in place that are uh, really making sure that community is part of what is being built. And that economically, if nothing else, that makes so much sense because we're meant for connection and connection and community means that we flourish. We've spoken about how housing needs to be sustainable, safe, stable, sociable and satisfying. But there is one further element that is going to be needed if we're going to solve our housing crisis. And that is the element of sacrifice. At the heart of Christian faith is the death of Christ, the sacrifice of his life to bring life to others. And sacrifice is going to be an important theme if we're going to make progress with our housing crisis. And that means that everyone involved in the housing industry, government, church, landowners, housing associations, landlords, individual people, we will all have to make sacrifices to solve this. Because without sacrifice, we don't get life.